Welcome everyone to the Directed IRA podcast with Mark Kohler and Matt Sorensen. Excited to be talking to you about using your IRA to invest in something you may actually care about. Yeah, this is your lucky day, folks, because we, uh, we're excited this summer for our Alternative Asset Summit. No, it's Alternative Investment Asset. How do you say it? <laughs> it's it's a tricky one. Alternative asset investment summit. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna A A I S. You know, it's gonna be following the Catalina okay. wine mixer. Yeah, there we go. Now, why we bring that up is this summer people are in our uh, community, our ecosystem, and directive, and saying we need more options of how to invest our retirement accounts. What what's out there? And and we are in a precarious spot. I mean, we just yeah. can't say, oh, don't go do this, go do that. There's liability there. So we yeah. created a whole event. Yeah. We're just going to parade options through that you guys can do your due diligence yeah, on. Yeah, learn. It's about education and meeting other people, networking. So look for that. Um, we're going to be announcing that. Make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. It's going to be in Southern California in the summer. Um, likely Costa Mesa. We're negotiating the contract with the hotel right now. But um, one of the biggest categories that pops up and one that is really trending right now mm -hmm. is private lending and loans with your IRA. Guys, interest rates have gone up, right? Yeah. Um, so debt is more valuable. So for those of you that have money in your IRA that want to lend it, you can get more yield on it because interest rates have gone up, more points on it, and the banks are tightening up. So this is a perfect opportunity for those that already do private money lending with their IRA or that are looking to do it to learn how this works. I love it. And private lending is a big category. I mean, it really is. There's there's first trust deeds, non-performing notes, second trust deeds, just yeah. uh, bridge loans. Uh, secured, unsecured. Secured, unsecured. Yeah, we're going to talk about that issue. <laughs> we're going to cover your A with uh, some good advice yeah. there. But, um, and it can be tempting because someone needs money. And so they are like, hey, how can you loan me money? And so instead of being a partner, at risk in a project, you say, well, I'll just take a point on the front, point on the back and eight or 9% interest. Heck, that could be better than being a partner where you don't have as much uh, security. So yeah. lots of good things with notes. Yeah, you're limited. You know, yeah. some of you are like, well, I wanna be a partner and make all the money on the back end. Well, you know what, let's hit some yeah. base hits. Yeah, and even last night I was speaking to a group, New Wealth Advisors, shout out to them. You know, they got a community of people that are flipping houses. And they love this topic about, okay, how do I get a loan from someone else's IRA to fund the rehab? Mm. You know, how does that work? And so we want to talk about it from the perspective of maybe you're raising money to do deals, but more particularly for those that have self-directed IRAs and you're the lender, okay? Mm. You want to be the bank now and you want to go lend money. What do you need to know? Yeah. So we're well, going to break that down. I like it. There's two sides to the table here. Those out there that are looking to put your money somewhere, what do you yeah. need to know? And those out there that are looking for money, what <laughs> do you need to know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but I want to go back. I mean, this is really about when you're lending, um, it's so easy to get greedy. You want to hear what the deal's <laughs> about and you want to be a partner and you want equity, but then who knows when you're going to get paid with the note. There's so much more certainty if mm -hmm. you do it right. And so we call those base hits. So Matt, when I point to you, what do you say? Just get on base, my friends. Get on base. And you know what? The banks have been doing it for years. There's a reason that every big office building back there, if you're watching this on YouTube, has a bank's name on the top of it, okay? <laughs> because they're just hitting base hits, all yeah. right? They're just making a little bit of money yeah. here, there, everywhere else, so. That was a um, little money ball reference. I'm Brad Pitt, he's Jonah Hill. I just yeah. wanna make sure we're clear yeah. on that. Yeah, thanks okay. for thanks for throwing me a bone there. I'm gonna be Jonah <laughs> yeah. Hill. I'll just point at you, base hit, okay, all right. Every guy wakes up in the morning and be like, ah, oh, I kinda got the Brad Pitt vibes going today, feeling good. <laughs> I mean, I love you, Jonah Hill. No one's waking up being like, <laughs> Ooh, I got the Jonah Hill vibes. <laughs> oh man, we we all we had him booked for the show. <laughs> not, anymore. Just, not anymore. Not <laughs> anymore. He just freaking cancellation call his agent. Request is, uh, Brew directed IRA yeah. podcast. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Let me hit a, the first point. If you're even new to this topic about self directed IRAs and how do they work, I want to make a few initial points. First of all, if you've got the IRA or 401k at Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab, and you're like, hey, I want to do a private money loan. I want to be a hard money lender with my IRA and loan someone else money. They're going to say you can't do it, and it's not because IRAs can't be lenders and making loans. It's because IRAs at Fidelity, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade can't do it. So you need to move to a company that lets you do self-directed IRAs, like With the no best company in the world. Yep, no tax, no, no penalty. No tax, no penalty. It's just you're moving from one account to the other. Yeah. And the best company you were saying? I mean, we all know. Yeah, directed, directed IRA. IRA. Directed IRA.com. You can open company. your account tonight <laughs> while you're eating cereal before you go to bed. You can just be like, yeah, beep, 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 beep. Online. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. I was like a good bowl of cereal. Before in bed? bed? No, I said before bed. Oh, before bed. Yeah, okay. I don't eat cereal in bed. No, what but type, what mean, type of cereal are we talking about? Are you talking about like like Fruit Loops? Or are we talking about like well, shredded wheat? Oh hell no! I mean, I mean, if I'm gonna binge late at night before bed, it's it's usually Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. I'm going with Lucky Charms. <laughs> I, I, we got our producer in the studio. You're with me it's, on that. This Lucky is Charms. it in like honor of St. Patrick's Day coming I, up. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lucky, Lucky Charms. Charms just hit you just right. Right you know, before bed, uh, sleep better. Love it. I'll okay. stand behind that. Okay, now, so for anybody out there with retirement accounts, <laughs> I, I love this. Stand behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, four out of five attorneys <laughs> yeah, endorse. I stand uh, behind. My uh, endorsement. Lucky, Lucky Charms. There. Yep. <laughs> so you, you want to have. Um, diversity in your retirement account too. So this gets to be exciting because you can say, well, I've got a little, some stocks, I got some ETFs, I've got some maybe real estate, maybe you're doing the crypto thing, maybe you're doing some precious metals, all of which you can do in your retirement account. Yeah. And, oh, I want to add a note to this. And there's a, a lot of education companies out there uh, probably the note school being one of the largest out there. We would not give them, I yeah, mean, we could mention yeah. two or three others. We're not noteworthy. There's a lot of good places out there, conferences yeah. and events. Yeah. yeah. So increase your education on this, but we definitely want to give you some warning. Um, and gosh, I want to say warnings and also some admonitions or encouragement here because we see these notes. Yeah. Yeah. You go, you may go out to your education, and you're in the back of the room and seeing and feeling this and that and another. But then we're the ones that see that document show up on our front door and we're like, uh, I don't know where you got your education, but yeah. we, need, we need to tighten this up. So we want to give you some do's and don'ts that I think are going to really help you. Because the last thing we want to see happen is you lose that retirement account. Let's make, let's hit base hits. Let's yeah. not strike out. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's, let's dive into it. Mark and I are both lawyers, so we're going to approach this from you, the person with the IRA, being a lender, all right? So we want to talk to you about how to do it. First, of course, we've identified we love the opportunity. There's going to be more opportunity for IRAs that want to be private lenders to get out there and find deals. Once, as the real estate market shifts, the value of dollars to get deals done, whether it's to acquire a property or to rehab or whatever it may be, it's just becoming that much more valuable as credit and the banks are tightening and as you can get more money because rates have gone up. So we love the opportunity, but I feel like where I've seen a lot of it, and guys, we're processing five to 10 of these a day at Directed IRA, someone doing a private money loan. Most of them are on real estate, but we want to go through a few things that you want to make sure you've done. Okay, I like And it. I think this segment of the show would be called, What Would the Bank Do? Yeah. Oh, I like that. WWBD. And, okay, and the, for those of you out there that are like, well, I want to wait to see how to raise money with loans. Well, people, for those of you out there looking for money, it's important you know what the lender is going to ask for and require. And I'm just going to say it now, be paying attention because I don't want you cutting corners on this. Mm -hmm. Because you start going, well, we can do it unsecured and they're trying to get tricky. And, you know, we're going to just hold, we're going to sign everything if we're going to give you security, but we're going to put it in a drawer just in case something goes wrong. Yeah. You know what? It's going to backfire on you because you're going to look like, Crook. Yeah, you're gonna and, and what I'll what I'll say for those of you raising money, uh, we did a webinar on notes and um, and raising money for real estate deals. I had Bill Predabon on here. He's been in our self directed IRA summit. We did a webinar. He sat right here. I was sitting here, <laughs> and he said he did 250 fix and flip deals in like the last five to seven years. 60% of them were funded by private money loans from other people's IRAs. The majority of his money raised on 250 deals from IRAs because he just simply knew the strategy and he knew that the IRAs and 401ks, that's where all the money's at. So I better talk about it and say, hey, do you wanna lend on this flip I'm doing? Oh, you don't have any money? What about your IRA or 401k? Oh yeah, I got 200 grand sitting there in a mutual fund I could care less about. Oh, Boom. let's talk. Yeah. All right. So. If you need more content on that, go to that webinar. That's more about how to raise it and access it. So just check direct IRA webinar there. Okay. okay. All right. I wanted to talk about how you make money with this, but you go next. What do you want? I'll follow your lead. Well, I, I want to get into like, what would the bank do? So that's what I was going to get into. Okay. Let's do that first. Yeah. Now, now caution here. What would the bank do? We're only talking about when you're lending money. Don't live the rest of your life with WWBD. Okay, you're going to be boring. No one wants to live. You're going to be poor. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get out of the house in the morning. No, All right. No. Okay. But when you're talking about lending your money, there's a reason that banks do things in a certain way. So let's just hit the first point. Okay. What is the bank going to do when they lend money on real estate? Say no. <laughs> first. Well, they, um, they want to make money. They do yeah. want to lend the money. They're going to gather info. Ooh, I like that. Okay, they're going to gather info. 
like about who the borrower is. Mm -hmm. Like, is this the first real estate you've done deal you've done? I'm lending you money to acquire a property or fund the rehab or both. Have you done this before? Yeah. Maybe a credit check, maybe a background check. Yeah. Um, People, I, and I know some of you are like, I'm going to do that. It's so affordable now. Mm -hmm. And if someone that wants to borrow money from you is not willing to do a credit check or a background check, at least, I understand a credit check can be hard. You know, some people don't want to ding and they're like, I'm not going to personally guarantee this anyway. Okay, fair enough. You're going to give me security on the real estate. We're going to come to that in a moment. But you've got to do some due diligence on the person. At the very least, Google their freaking name. (laughs) Jeez, we're crying out loud. I had, it was probably 10 years ago. I remember uh, it was a mom and a daughter that uh, called me up and said, the person we lent our money to is not paying us. I'm like, okay, show me your paperwork. It was a half a sheet of paper of we're going to loan you X that was it. I mean, there was no security, no personal guarantee. Nope. And, and I said, well, okay. Um, well, and they said we had to move fast or we were going to lose the deal. I said, okay. And then we looked at their names. We're like, who are these people? And I was sad because I literally remember Googling their name and there was fraud charges and they, and we literally, there was literally a page of aliases for these people. I mean, one simple Google search would have alerted to them to this situation. And they never got their money. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've got to do yeah. background, not on the deal. You're going to do background on the deal, yeah. but you also have to do it on the person. Yeah. So check in. Has anybody else worked with that person before? Have you had a private money lender before? I can maybe check as a reference. Like, who knows you? Like, you know, like even just do a little bit of like, you know, if you're going to hire someone for a job, you check a reference. If you're going to lend someone hundreds of thousands of dollars, Are you going to check a reference maybe? Okay, so that's just good. So understand who that borrower is. And I want to say one more thing on this. They may be an influencer too. They could be one of the educators in a class scenario, conference, or workshop. And so you've got them a little higher on a pedestal. And you're like, okay, this person's got a reputation. They're not going to screw me over. And I've been pitched with that. Um, just recently someone was like, Hey, we'll work out a deal and we'll sign everything, but we're not going to record. And I said, so there's no security. And to get them to finally admit, yeah, well, there's no security for this time period. And so we did a little background on the person and you're right on public record. They have a great reputation and all that, but we started to ask more questions and people are, are you seriously going to just trust someone for 90 days that if anything could go wrong, you literally could lose it. I mean, is that the type of deal you want to do? And we were like, no, we don't. And so we've got to be very, very objective. So it could be a family member. It could be a church member. Um, it could be an advisor of some sort. You know, lawyers and accountants get in trouble for this all the time. And it was on CNN this morning. That what was it Murdoch guy. It was on, they were showing his testimony of ripping clients off. And oh my gosh, yeah. I, anyway, it was huh. in the news today. But huh. it's just, yeah. So just another one. Great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Another one. So anyway, but yeah, do really drill down on that background. Okay. Now next. Okay. Well, the first, the next thing the bank's going to want to do, and this is you remember you're the bank now. All right. They're going to look at the property and I'm not saying they're just going to like take the word for the person that's raising money, telling you what it's worth and what the after repair value is. Okay. Do you have an appraisal on the property? Do you at least have a broker price opinion? Have you maybe checked with an agent you know that's not spitting you the information that that the person who's asking you for money is telling you what it's worth? That's what the bank's going to do. They're going to get a third-party appraisal. And you know what? Make the borrower pay for that. The borrower pays for that stuff. When you go close this thing, they pay for the appraisal or at least a broker price opinion to make you feel comfortable that the property has value of what you're willing to lend to. And we're going to talk about where you make money on this. We've got to bring up the concept of points here in a moment. But on this note, okay, let's step back to when we said we're starting the show with private lending, there may be a situation where you're going to lend someone money that's starting a restaurant or they yeah. have a small business. You're still going to get security and what is the best security possible? Real estate. And so if someone says, hey, will you loan my restaurant a hundred grand or what my startup, my software company, whatever it is, say, okay, let's talk. What do you have as collateral? <laughs> That's what the bank's going to ask. Yeah. And so if they, if they go, well, I have a home with two or 300 grand of equity. Okay. So even though you're not lending on a fix and flip with this house across town, you're lending to a business, but you still have to do that due diligence on the, the collateral, which is 
please people. It's mm-hmm. got to be real estate. Do not loan it on a 1987 Trans Am with a tunnel ramp and a two, you know, uh, just stick to real Let estate. Let me tell you why that's important. I remember a call I had. This is like 10 plus years ago. Um, our client was the business owner who had mm-hmm. started an LLC for a business. And then he did it for liability protection. And he got a loan from a friend to start the business and finance it. And that person who loaned him the money did exactly what you said. They got a lien on the guy's house mm. for the loan. Well, you know what? That business failed. And the, the whole reason that that client was calling me is he's trying to figure a way out of it because he didn't want to pay it back. And he's like, I got this LLC, but I did let him put a lien on my house for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he was stuck. And I had to tell him that. I was like, I mean, I was advocating for him to like, you know, I'm advocating for you, to, but I'm like, dude, you let the lien go on your house. It's there. It ain't moving unless you pay that guy back. Mm. So we had to play ball and negotiate to get him paid off. So those are the things that work in your favor when the deal, the business, whatever doesn't go in your way. That's your fallback is you have some collateral or something, yeah. which is again, what would the bank do? The bank does that. Yeah. And, and I think some negotiating tactics are here for you as a lender is if someone's like, well, freak, if you're going to require all that, I should go to the bank. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> but, 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 but you can say this, I want to do this deal. And I can do it fast, but we're not going to cut corners on paperwork. Let me repeat that. This is your negotiation tactic. When someone starts to be squeamish about giving you security, and that that's okay, still doesn't mean it's bad, but you say, you know what? The only way this is going to work is with good paperwork. Now, I can move faster than the bank, but I am not going to cut corners on what the bank would ask for. And if they start to go, ooh, going somewhere else, Oh, you let them go because yeah. I promise you a deal, another deal will come that they're legit and you're legit and it comes together. Match made in heaven. Yeah. And you know, the real real estate people doing deals, business owners raising money for their business, they are going to jump through the right hoops to do it right. And like, you know, the person I said that do 250 deals, they record stuff. They get this documented. They give them a lien on title. It might be in second position or, or first, depending on what, where the loan's coming in. But they're jumping through these hoops. And so don't feel like you're asking for too much. That is the norm. Yeah, they're going to make you feel bad. normally how it's done. Yeah. The, the crook will make you feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so just know you're not overreaching or over asking. You're asking for how it should be done and how it normally yeah. is done, even in the private lending space. Okay, don't be confused with someone trying to get around and cut corners because they just want your money tomorrow and they don't have to prepare the documents and go to that cost. And maybe they don't have any collateral they can give you, or maybe you're going to be in tenth position on this property and they don't want you to know that they've had this many loans on the property. I've gotten burned myself. Um, I did a private loan. Was it uh, Scout Camp or? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I've gotten burned at Scout Camp. That's for sure. But no, I've been, I've been burned Mark as well. Mark, former Scoutmaster. Because you don't think it's going to happen to you. The worst enemy of this whole process is yourself. Because you're going to be like, they wouldn't do it to me. This person's an influencer or their family or my church member. They're not going to take advantage of me. And we deceive ourselves in putting our guard down. You cannot do that. Now, another disclaimer. If some of you are like, well, hold on. I was going to listen to this podcast and you're going to tell me what documents to do. <laughs> well, we'll mention them. But guys, if you're going to loan money, you've got to educate yourself on the process. And it can vary from state to state as well. And it can vary on the type of deal you're doing. Hence, maybe if you're going to loan hundred grand out of your IRA, you call one of the lawyers at our office and go, can I pay you for an hour? Can you give me the advice of what to do in my situation? Maybe that four or $500 is worth it when you're about yeah. to spend a hundred grand. People, freaking A. Yeah, and you know what? Those documents, you know, you know, and it might take a few hours of time. It depends on your deals and your state. But yeah. but that document, if you're going to be doing this over and over again, which is what, when we say, when I see the self-directed IRA accounts here that are really private money lenders, and we have some really big ones actually that just do this over and over and over again. It's the next, the next deal they do, the same documents, different property, all right? So you just kind of learn how to do it once, get it dialed in, get your process in, what you're going to do. You got your document that works in the state you're typically lending in, and you just go do it over and over and over and over again. You don't need the lawyer every time unless you're changing stuff up or you feel it's uneasy about something. So just know it's not like every time you need to go through the process. Yeah. But your first, you need some training wheels. You do. And and let me give a disclaimer. <laughs> I won't use that word again. But uh, <laughs> when you call, uh, say, a lawyer at our office, level one is just tell me what I need to do and give me a little guidance. That's that hour I'm talking about. Just so that you feel like you've got a phone, pers- a phone number and someone you can call. Then the lawyer's going to say, 
Do you need me to help you prepare a package of documents you can use over and over again? Do you want me to assist you through the process? Yeah, that's going to cost more. That's where the yeah. a few hours might come into play. But at least start with that initial, tell me what I'm my blind spot here. What yeah. am I need to be doing? And some of you might have a lot of education on this and the lawyer's just there to double check things. Some of you are like, I, I need the lawyer to really take me through this first deal. And it might cost you a little bit more, yeah. but you should be getting a point. So if you're loaning a hundred grand two, yeah, or two, yeah. you should be getting at least a point on the front, which means they're going to give you 1% on whatever the loan value is to up to 2%. So that'd be a thousand to $2,000. Then they're going to pay you interest. Sometimes there's a point on the back. There's They can be structured all sorts of ways. Well, that money that you're getting, I know you want to be like, ooh, I'm going to kill it on this one. If it's your first one, use that money to do it right. So the second one is when you really start to scale and have a bigger profit margin. I like it. Um, okay, well, I'm going to hit the documents. So you're going to have the promissory note. This is basically the loan agreement that says, now on this, keep I'm going to borrow money from you. Use yeah, that example. You're going to borrow money from me. Okay, okay so this is... Mark J. Kohler, LLC. Yep, yep. I'm going to borrow okay. from you. All right, so my IRA is going to lend the money, so it's going to be, the lender is Directed Trust Company, FBO, Matt Sorensen, Roth IRA. That's, I'm lending for that. It's not Matt Sorensen lending you the mm. money, it's my IRA. So, of course, I have my account set up at the Suffered Custodian, Directed IRA, move my money over from wherever it's at, and now... Do I typically I you, do I typically give you the promissory note, or are you going to give it to me? How does that is it? What happens most commonly? What you should do if you're the private money lender is you should dictate terms and you should have the documents. Mm. Now, a lot of times the the borrower is going to have one that they like, mm. right? Yeah, that's <laughs> and so weird. they're going to present it to you. And let me just tell you, that was not written to benefit you. Yeah. Okay. So, and a lot of times we'll hear this. You know, well, you know, my lawyers drafted this. It's great. Yeah. Their lawyers drafted it. It's great for them. <laughs> mm. Okay, so if I'm going to be a lender, the yeah. step one, get the money over, directed IRA, yeah. know how much I'm going to allocate. And some of you might have four or 500 grand or 50 to a million, whatever it is, you can carve out the amount you want to start lending, get that over to a new account at directed. Yeah. And then, so the money's there. Step two, I find Mark Kohler's going to borrow money from you, Matt. Yep. So I'm like, yeah. hey, Matt, I got a promissory note. You're going to go, hmm. I'll send you the note yeah. I want to use. Right, yeah. And, okay. you, you know, this is where we say once you've done this a few times, you're going to have your docs down and what you want, so you start dictating terms. Now, I mean, sure, I could have my attorney look at that note and, and you know, say, mm, does this work? And and may, maybe it does. I, I don't know. Sometimes it does. Sometimes people will just use the title company, quite honestly. A lot of title companies have a pretty straight up and clean, cut and dirty promissory note and deed of trust you can do on investor deals. So if you have a good investor-friendly title or escrow company, or even some states have attorney closings. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, that's a little more neutral of a document. Gotcha. So you you could use that, and we see we see that quite a bit on on private money loans. So now on this, this is still after you did the due diligence on the person, right? And I've decided I'm they're worth lending to, yeah, right. We, and I know the property and detail on the property in terms of value. And can we do a little step back on before yeah. the promissory note is presented to me? I want to borrow the money to, from you. Yeah, you've done a little background on me. What would be typical background on the property? I I like to get at least a comparative market analysis. You need your own agent or own real estate professional, some other invest, someone you know that can give you a real assessment of that property. Okay, no, somewhere then a title report, so okay. we know what other liens, right? Yes, right. So now you, this is the next thing because we we have the documents done right, and this is a really common mistake people make. And we've seen this over and over and over again, even in our process at Directed, and now in our instruction forms, we are like very clear on this who is recording the document mm. okay so we have the note but there needs to be a deed of trust or mortgage some states call it a deed of trust some states call it a mortgage this is the lien that goes on the property that says hey if they don't pay back this note they can come foreclose on the property they've got a lien on this all right so that's a really really important document that the banks are going to make sure a title company is going to record against the property and they're going to make sure they know what lien priority it's in. Is this a first position, second position, third position? And the same company that's going to do that recording is probably the one you enlisted to do the title report. Right. And that some people call it a PR, pre preliminary report. Preliminary report, yes, yep. before the title insurance issues. Because So this is another thing that the, well, there will be a cut corner. You generally want a title insurance policy. It's called a lender's insurance policy. Again, if you use a bank... The bank makes the borrower pay for a lender's insurance title policy. So this is not a cost to you. These are costs that when this thing settles, the borrower is paying for. All right. So 
go get the lender's insurance title policy. It's cheaper than what's called an owner's policy when you buy and sell a property, but at least go get a lender's insurance policy. And so I want to repeat this for everybody. So I come to Matt. I go, Matt's already got his money. It is retirement account. Yeah. And I go, Matt, I got this deal. Could be a business deal where I just, I'm going to provide a lien on my home or it could be a fix and flip and I want to give you a lien on the property. You're going to say, do you have a current appraisal? And I'd say, oh, I got my appraisal done. I paid for it. Okay. You're going to go, okay, good. Do, have you done a title report? Do you trust people to pull the title reports or do you like to pull your own and bi- and charge the borrower? Um, well, I I want it to come from the title escrow company. Directly from them. Yeah. With the proper date. Right. Like I want it, yeah, I want, it's got to be close to when we're closing, you know. Yeah, so yeah. And I want to get it from the title escrow company. Right? And, and then you're going to say to this title escrow company, you're going to be handling the recording Right. And the closing. And you're going to escrow the money. So when I when we send out the money and you say, hey, directed IRA, send the money, you know, sometimes people say, well, just send it directly to the borrower. Ooh. Okay, mm. if you want. I mean, it's your money and uh, you get paid back or you don't. I mean, it's your account. But the smart way to do it and what we what's in our instruction to do is do you have a third-party escrow or title company. In some states, there's what's called attorney closings. That person's going to get the money. And then they're going to make the borrower sign all the documents in order in exchange for the money. And then they record the deed of trust or mortgage on the property. Then give me my money. So I've got to sign right. all this stuff. Well, they'll usually release the money and record like within a day. Gotcha. But they make sure all the documents are signed. See, because in order for me to get a lien on your property, this deed of trust or mortgage, you got to sign a document giving me that got to be notarized and all that. Mm -hmm. So that document's got to be done. If I don't get this now before you get the money, I ain't getting it. Yeah, You know what I mean? (laughs) You're going to be like, yeah, pass on that. I'll get to it later. Yeah. Now, and I'm going to, I wasn't going to share a a personal experience, but I'll be, keep it brief. This was probably 10 to 15 years ago. And this was a deal with my dad, my brother and me. And I had a lot of mud on my face when this was all over because I was fairly cocky. I had been a lawyer CPA for probably five to seven years. And I thought, oh, this won't happen to me. Someone's not going to take advantage of me, blah, blah, blah. And we were doing a fix and flip lend. We were going to help the rehabber uh, with a loan to get over the finish line and sell this property. Well, I was told actually not by the borrower, but a financial advisor that had lined up the deal. And he said, yeah, I pulled the title report. You're going to be in second position, but here's where the other loans are in front of you. And I was like, and I took it at face value. I said, oh, okay, good, good. And we got the promissory note and all that. Well, I personally, and this is me being vulnerable and transparent here, I personally didn't look at that title policy. I didn't verify that. Well, sure enough, the property got strung out, strung out, strung out. When are you going to sell it? Things started to implode. When I finally pulled the title report, and ours got recorded, we got recorded, sure enough, but I was number five in position. And there was another guy behind me that even loaned five times what I loaned behind me. There, everybody got taken advantage of. And this financial advisor had trusted the borrower, stupid him, and I had trusted the financial advisor, stupid me. So stupid is as stupid does. That's a (laughs) Forrest Gump quote. But anyway, um, this is- Very insightful. Yeah, you know, if I can quote Forrest Gump, um, we're gonna be alone. But I, I blew it. And so this is how careful you have to be. There are wolves in sheep's clothing out there that are not going to look out for you. They're going to do what's best for them. Yeah, such a great example because just because you get a lien and it's recorded doesn't mean you're protected because you could be, as you guys were, in fifth position, okay? And so you want to know what's the property worth and who's in front of me and how much to what amount. And those are usually documented on the mortgages and liens that are ahead of you. So that'll be something when you look at that title report, sometimes a preliminary report, title report, it's gonna say, and it's really convoluted where you find it, but it's in one of the sections about all the prior liens ahead of you. All right, so you just wanna know that. And a lot of times, let's be honest, when you're lending, and doing private money lending, many times there's already a first there. They've bought it subject to, or they've got a private hard money lender that purchased the acquisition, and you might be the lender coming in second to fund fund the rehab. And so just know where you're at and know what the strategy of this investor is, what their track record is. They're obviously typically using your money to fund the rehab, to improve it. So, you you know, you got to be smart about this and understand all these different dynamics um, of what's happening. But if you're in fifth position, talk about a red flag. Yeah. It was, it was over. We lost the money. <laughs> yeah. We did. We lost it. And um, 
Now, do, did you? Have, I have another warning uh, yeah. kind of on this vein. But what, what other docs? Wrap that. Kind of put a bow around this. Anything else you'd say about the documentation process? Um, so make sure you know again who's recording it. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, you've got to indicate that with us if we're processing the note directly for you. Um, but also, is like, what is the process for the payments? So that should be indicated pretty clearly. Some people will use a third-party payment provider, particularly if you're doing like long-term loans notes and this is common too people will lend other people on commercial deals and stuff like that um or they'll buy existing notes out there that you can invest in and buy an existing defaulted and note that now is performing it was provided non-performing there's lots of different things we see people do with their accounts so sometimes there's a payment processor in the middle collecting the notes and then you know if they miss a payment they send them a nasty letter and say you missed a payment here's your late fee if they goes into default they'll go process the foreclosure and you're paying for that um a lot of time on the short-term notes for like the rehab fix and flip type stuff we've been talking about um, today is that's just going to go directly to the IRA company. Now, maybe you have an IRA LLC or solo K, it can go directly there, but um, it's coming right back to the IRA company. Now, before my warning, I this just reminded me, some of you might be a little more um, educated and, and interested in buying a bundle of loans. You might be doing some non-performing notes or buying several performing notes. Typically with that scenario, you're going to have an LLC owned by your IRA so that you can transact a little more uh, fluidly. You like being able to make decisions quickly, buy a bunch of notes, and, and then maybe you even you hire someone to help you make them performing and you give them a piece of the action. That'll be a separate contract with that person. But even if you're going to do a bundle of performing or non-performing, you're still following these processes. You need to make sure that your position, yeah. your LLC or your account is recorded against these properties and you're buying someone's note and you want to make sure that that recording process has protected you. And uh, there has to be things recorded. Um, and if anybody tries to say, well, we're, you know, we're going to buy these non-performing, but I'll take care of you and I'll do this and I'll do that. Say, no, slow down. And you have to ask hard questions of what happens if something goes wrong. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, there's kind of a, what I say with this is there's kind of a style to this and being good at this. Um, if you're kind of like the, you want to do this artfully what i'm trying mm. to say so in the negotiation you yeah think. as you're like kind of going through the process you, you want to almost like i kind of like the approach of like assume those documents are going to be there so don't be like antagonistic but just be like okay so when should i expect the title report what's what's the title escrow company that's being used um what position is the lien and, and do we have a record or document on that mm. just you know be be chill about it you know don't don't come off like a pain in the ass and make it adversarial with the other person because a lot of times what happens and i've seen that there's a lot of the private money lender accounts that we have here and we have a thousand plus of them that are really just doing private lending is they're lending to the same real estate person over and over again mm -hmm. they've got a number of different real estate investors that are doing deals and they're going back so you're making a relationship with that person all right when that deal closes you're like cool What's your next one? Because I want my money to be going right back to work. And so you want to view this as a relationship, but make sure they're respecting you and your money in the process. Um, so I just wanted to note that because I think some people get into like battle mode and yeah. they burn the bridge and the person's like, you know what? I got good deals. I'm a good business owner. I, I run my deals clean. Um, I don't want to be treated like that and run through the ringer. Yeah. And you know, I'll Matt, the next Matt, Matt makes such a good point. For those close to me, they know... Um, yeah, and being transparent again, I I don't do a lot of uh, lending projects myself personally. I don't. I uh, I know what documents need to be done. I know what needs to be there to protect my client, but I don't go out and analyze notes and yields and points and and what markets and who to work. That's not me. And so I'm not going to. And most of our attorneys, they're not going to be giving you investment advice. Yeah. They're going to be giving you advice on protecting you, asset protection advice. So uh, Matt makes a great point because me, I, <laughs> I, I'm not a good negotiator in these situations. I tend, because I've been burned in the past, I tend to be a little skeptical. And when anybody suggests cutting corners, I immediately, this is not a good thing, but I immediately <laughs> start to judge them and I start to get a little more abrasive and, uh, and that's not good. I admit that. Yeah. Um, but 
I'm sick of getting ripped off. I'm sick of seeing clients get ripped off. And I know there's this is a great area to make money. And I like what Matt said that you've got to keep your head. You can't get emotional. You got to just assume, hey, this stuff's going to happen. And then when it doesn't, you go, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go somewhere else. You may keep that relationship open. Uh, me, I tend to be like, what the hell, blah, 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 you know. And then everybody's like, geez, what happened to you? I'm like, well, why aren't you doing this right? And I can be a little condescending and demeaning, and and I'm I'm working on that. My is this therapist, a little self reflection. It is, it is a little self reflection <laughs> because I get mad. I I just. I just yeah, am a and you know what? Advocate. There's people on both ends of that too, because there's other people who just get steamrolled, you know, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, sounds great. Okay. Oh, you're not going to put a lien on the property or give me any security on the property. It's going to be unsecured. You know what we do when you come through our office with that? We make you sign an additional disclosure that says, "I know it's risky to loan my money to someone else with no risk. I know the only no reason, security with, with sorry with no, with no security. So, and the, and we say that this is a risky investment. Like we make you like." Tell us, I know that what I'm doing is risky. And and so, because that's not the normal way you do it. Sure, we have some unsecured notes, and you may do that, and that happens every once in a while, and it could be smart. But most of the time, it's it's very, very high risk. Yeah. And, and this brings me to the other warning. Um, there may be um, brokers or, or uh, real estate developers or business owners that say, hey, um, I... I'll, we'll bundle these up. I, I've got a lot of deals. This is very ho- common with fix and flippers. They may say, hey, well, loan me money, but I got three deals going. And so we'll, you loan it to me and and I'll give you a security against these three properties, but I don't want to record them because that'll cloud the title and I'll make it messy. But, but you, you know, if we can come push comes to shove, I can record against any one of these, mm. but trust me, you're going to get more. And they may even sweeten the pot with points and, oh, and look at my you know, my track record. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Well, it transactionally, it might make sense, but for protection, it makes no sense at all. So when anyone's trying to get around a security offering where they want to bundle notes, put a bunch of people together so that they have more unilateral control of the money so they can move quickly, which I get, and that may allow them to make more money, but it doesn't protect you. And this is your hard earned money and you don't need the stress. Yeah. Well, we got lots of other resources on this. So get over to, like I said, the Direct Diary webinar. We talked about how to raise this from the other side. Um, I've got a whole chapter in my book, The self directed Diary Handbook on Private Money Lending Notes. Also, maybe just look at our Direction of Investment form on notes just to see how we do it. And the, you and can the download documents that. and questions. Yeah, just go to directdiary.com, Direction of Investment Forms. Um, and then we'll be back next week with another amazing episode of the Directed IRA podcast. Mm-hmm. Till then, stay calm, get, self direct on. Base hits, people. Base hits. Base hits. That's what we say. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everyone.